A tiny two-watt laser just changed everything. From 36,000 kilometers above Earth, a Chinese satellite beamed data to the ground at a jaw-dropping 1 gigabit per second, five times faster than Starlink. No giant antennas, no massive power, just precision light slicing through space and atmosphere. This isn't science fiction, it's real, and it could redefine global internet, space tech, and who leads the next era of innovation. Something remarkable happened in July 2025 that shook the global space tech community. A satellite hovering 36,000 kilometers above Earth, deep in geostationary orbit, sent a data stream back to Earth using just a 2-watt laser. That's the same energy consumption as a tiny LED light bulb. But the result? A data speed of 1 gigabit per second, blazing past what most people receive from fiber optic connections on Earth and far faster than the average 50 to 250 megabits per second Starlink users get from thousands of satellites. What makes this even more impressive is the sheer distance involved. Unlike Starlink's low-Earth orbit satellites, this Chinese satellite was parked in geostationary orbit, 36,000 kilometers away. At that range, sending even a clean voice signal is challenging, let alone a high-speed data stream. Earth's atmosphere distorts laser signals with turbulence, diffraction, and scattering, which normally weakens and scrambles long-range optical signals. And yet, this experiment succeeded where many others have struggled. The credit goes to the advanced system used by the Chinese research team from Peking University and the Chinese Academy of Sciences. They deployed what's known as AOMDR technology, a combination of adaptive optics, AO, and mode diversity reception, MDR. Adaptive optics helped correct the distortions in real time as the laser beam passed through the atmosphere, acting like a smart lens system that compensates for air disturbances. On the receiving end, MDR enabled scientists to collect the scattered or distorted signal and accurately reconstruct the original data using multiple overlapping modes. This synergy allowed a weak, non-invasive laser to deliver a smooth, high-speed downlink despite environmental challenges. Even more noteworthy is how energy-efficient this method is. At 2 watts, it uses dramatically less power than radio frequency systems used by traditional satellites. It also requires fewer hardware components, making it an ideal candidate for lightweight, high-bandwidth satellite designs of the future. In essence, China has just demonstrated a potentially disruptive method of satellite communication one that challenges the current model of satellite internet dominated by LEO constellations. As news of the laser test spread, so did a storm of misinformation. Across social media and even some media outlets, headlines erupted with claims that China's satellite laser had blinded or damaged Starlink satellites. The idea quickly gained traction, a powerful space laser striking down rival networks in orbit. But the truth? None of that happened. There was no confrontation, no interference, and certainly no damage. The laser used in this test was not even directed at other satellites. Instead, it was aimed at a designated ground station, and the purpose was purely scientific, to test high-speed data transmission through the atmosphere using low-powered optical equipment. The confusion likely stemmed from the high sensitivity around satellite technologies and the growing competition in the space sector. In a world where orbital tools are increasingly tied to communication, security, and national pride, the line between innovation and confrontation is often blurred, especially when emerging technologies are involved. Add in the word laser, and public imagination does the rest. The laser used in this test operated in the near-infrared spectrum and had no destructive capability. It didn't damage any sensors, disrupt orbits, or pose any harm. Its only job was to send a high-fidelity data stream over a long distance with remarkable clarity. The viral claim that Starlink satellites were somehow pulverized or compromised by this experiment is not supported by any factual evidence and has been debunked by multiple independent experts. Even so, the fact that such rumors spread so quickly is a lesson in itself. It highlights how advanced space technologies are now viewed through a lens of heightened sensitivity. Whether it's a test of laser optics, satellite propulsion, or orbital navigation, any unusual activity in space tends to raise questions about intent.
even when the science is sound and the objectives are peaceful. This misunderstanding also underscores the need for clearer communication from researchers and media alike. When countries achieve significant technological milestones in orbit, they must ensure that the goals are transparent to avoid feeding public speculation or misinterpretation. What makes this two what laser test so fascinating isn't just the data speed or the technical finesse, it's the broader possibilities it unlocks. The same technologies used to stream data from space could, in other contexts, support advanced space operations that go far beyond civilian communication. While this specific test was conducted for scientific purposes, the dual-use nature of laser systems means that the same infrastructure could one day serve very different roles. In the defense community, there's increasing interest in how optical communication advancements could evolve into strategic tools, used not only to transfer data, but also to influence how assets function in orbit. Several published assessments, including those from the U.S. Space Force, Note that China is actively researching a range of emerging capabilities related to space-based systems. These include tools for non-kinetic satellite disruption, such as electronic interference, cyber tools, and directed energy applications. While the two-what test does not fall into this category, the core enabling technologies, like adaptive optics and precision beam shaping, are critical components of those systems. One conceptual idea being discussed in expert circles is the possibility of submarine-mounted laser systems. These platforms, fitted with retractable masts, could fire beams through the ocean's surface and into orbit, designed not to destroy satellites, but to temporarily block, confuse, or disable their sensors. Such systems, while theoretical, are grounded in real scientific research and illustrate just how flexible optical systems can be. China's success in transmitting stable laser communication through the Earth's turbulent atmosphere demonstrates an advanced level of beam control and atmospheric compensation, skills that are incredibly valuable across multiple space domains. Of course, this doesn't mean that every test has hidden intentions, but it does mean that every technological leap introduces new layers of possibility, and with them, responsibility. As nations advance in satellite communication, Global awareness and cooperation will be essential to ensure these tools enhance connectivity rather than escalate tension. In summary, while the July 2025 laser test was peaceful and groundbreaking, it adds momentum to a broader transformation in how space infrastructure is built and used. China's two what laser test wasn't just a scientific achievement. It was a signal that the future of satellite communication is arriving faster than anyone expected. Transmitting 1 gigabit per second of data from geostationary orbit using minimal power, this breakthrough challenges today's space internet models and unlocks new possibilities in connectivity and orbital technology. While the experiment was peaceful, its dual-use potential reminds us how closely innovation and strategy are now linked in space. As laser systems evolve, the key question is no longer can it be done, but how will we use it? The answers will shape space for decades to come. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more updates on space exploration and scientific discoveries, and don't forget to leave a comment below. Also, you can visit our website, spaceinus.com. Thank you for watching, and see you next time.